Wolf? Stars are there and we exactly would want to know how it is that we can shoot and embark upon it. So on the stage I have Ms. Afneet Kaur Sidhu who is presently an, AI, an AIG under the intelligence coverage of Batinda. She also has an additional charge of AIG counterintelligence and she is also the first women shooter from Punjab to represent India at Olympic Games and also win medals in Commonwealth and Asian Games. So I believe it's a great, great potential to know how it is to embark and achieve at sports and be there as a public servant helping the society and community. Ma'am, I would request you to please join us. She has had a lot many sports achievements from Commonwealth Games 2006, a gold and silver medalist. She's also participated in Asian Games, World Police Games and All India Police Shooting Champions for four times. She's also been ranked as the world best ranking under number nine. She joined as a Deputy Superintendent of Police Punjab in 2011 served as SSP of Farid Kot, Malir Kotra and also Fazil Khan. Along with her, I have Shakun Chaudhary. She is the first woman to qualify and represent India in the Olympics in clay pigeon shooting. She is an Asian Games medalist, World Championship and a World Cup finalist and holds multiple Asian Championship medals and National Games champion. Ma'am, I would request you to also join us here on stage. Along with them, I have uh, Saurabh Dukalji, who is currently working as an independent journalist covering sports and social issues. He's also associated with Pickstory, a new social media platform designed to fight misinformation, hate speech, abuse and other forms of toxicity. So, we would love to have you on stage. He is also a content creator and also has a YouTube channel, Sports Gown, dedicated to sports persons braving all odds. Let's see what do they have to showcase us at the element of shooting for the stars. Over to you all. We will be just handing over the mics to you. Hello, Kim. So, um, thanks, playwright, uh, for giving me an opportunity to share a stage with the two Olympians, and especially the ones who I had the privilege uh, to be part of their uh, sporting journey as a sports journalist. So, welcome you both. I, Avneet is the first woman shooter from Punjab to make it to the Olympics and currently working as a AIG with the Punjab police. Shagwan is the first Indian woman shotgun shooter to make it to the Olympics and currently working with ONGC. She is also an entrepreneur helping parents in their hospitality business so both of them are not only inspiring young generation to take up the sport to excel but they are the great example of women empowerment avneet comes from punjab so but shagun is from rajasthan both the states have a great gun culture a uh, history of uh, uh, sending Olympians and like both have a Dr. Karni Singh from Rajasthan made it to the Olympics five times. Punjab it's Raja Randeer Singh. Both the states have an individual Olympic medal in shooting to their credit. Colonel Raja Vardhan Singh Rathor, silver in Athens, Abhinav Pindra, gold in Beijing. And both the states are patriarchal societies. So the road for women is not easy, at least at the time when they started the sport. So my first question to both of you. So the challenges you faced in your shooting career and at what time 
you thought that you are going to compete at the world highest sporting arena olympics and how shooting changed the course of your life uh, first to every and good morning everyone it's still 2 minutes to noon so good morning again uh, thank you for having me here first of all and thank you saurav thank you shakun baba coming to the question i would say that it was not an easy journey when i started i come from batinda i belong to batinda and uh, shooting happened i would say with a very fortunate turn of events in my life i went to study at a village in a college where my mother was working so it was there that i started shooting and it was a very new sport here hardly anyone knew what shooting is all about even i was not a very uh, not a person who was too much into sports i was a very studious sort of person so shooting happened and uh, the first question my parents were asked or even i was asked was that what is the benefit of it someone even asked me told me not asked me told me that matlab when you will get married to your mother in law would want to have you you know make gold rotis so that was the question i was asked that would so, be the target yeah so i proved her wrong that lady i proved her wrong because instead of gold rotis i was able to shoot perfect tens oh. with a gun so and my mother in law is quite proud of it also so uh people ask questions especially in our part of the state where women feticide was very rampant at that time so it was not easy but i think i had great support from my parents i am truly blessed that i got such progressive family i was born into such a progressive family where there was no discrimination and i was given every opportunity to realize my dreams so the struggle was not easy yes initially uh, questioning from relatives from friends and because i was a person who was very intelligent in studies also even some of my teachers were like apprehensive that uh, what will you do you are you are taking a big risk because after my graduation after my post graduation uh, everyone was like i should be looking for a job but instead i chose sports and at that time i was not even in the indian team so it was a big risk but i think you have to take risks that is what makes you separates you from the crowd so that is how it happened and i'm here today can it good morning everyone uh, first of all thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here it's been indeed a privilege to meet all of you uh, as sort of put it yes uh, uh, i would call rajasthan a patriarchal state in war but the uh, uh back in the day yes shooting was pretty much especially so i am a part of shotgun shooting so i shoot trap for the country uh clay pigeon shooting it was a completely male dominated sport no women on the ridge uh because it's the closest sport that you get to hunting so it was basically you know all the men who thought that uh it's their job to get food on the table so similarly uh they side clay pigeon shooting I was uh, I had the privilege uh, to uh, be my father's daughter in the sense uh, my dad actually trained with Dr. Karni Singh Ji in Bikaner and he shot skeet with him they were a part of the same national uh, team for Rajasthan team for Rajasthan and uh, I had the privilege of going to the range back in the day with them and watching both of them shoot so i was introduced to the sport at a very young age of 3 so i remember i used to go with my uh, toy gun while i would watch both of them and then mimic that shooting um contrary to a myth i have always been inclined towards sport i was a national level swimmer in school i was part of uh, the baseball team i went to school in ngd in jaipur so that had always been uh, something that i was uh, inclined towards Unfortunately, we weren't as lucky as the kids are there today because we didn't have too many facilities. So I, like, I went to school in uh, Jaipur. We didn't have any range then, so obviously shooting wasn't uh, really a choice for me. Hence the other sports. Uh, what uh, taking up sports as a woman has its own challenges, because first of all, the shelf life of a woman in sport is very very short. I have uh, not mine. I it's been twenty three years since I've been at it, and I'm still at it. Uh, but uh, generally, 
uh, because uh, as Avneet rightly put, there are a lot of questions in everyone's mind when a girl takes up something which is not uh, 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 not the norm. Sports was definitely not the norm. Clay pigeon shooting was definitely not the norm. And uh, when I entered the fray, thanks to my parents, uh, my dad mostly, who really encouraged me to take it up, he always, he didn't have any questions as far as how far I'll go. He just encouraged me. Uh, yes, there were a lot of doubts in people's minds, uh, in, and rightfully so, because there was no future in sport. There was no financial security. There is no, and you have to understand the kind of time that an athlete uh, gives to sport, that's the amount of time that they're taking away from whether it's academics or to look for a job. So it's a very delicate situation because over here, you're going into a black hole where you don't know whether there is any future over there. If you have education by your side and then you're, uh, you know, whether it's MBA or whatever, at least you have some sort of guarantee in order to make a future for yourself. It's not a gamble as such. So for you have to be very, very brave and you have to keep fighting the self doubts that crop up in your head, um, saying that you're on the right track and you're doing the right thing. In my case, there was no woman who went for the Olympics. And so there was nobody to look up to and say that, oh, you know, if she can do it, I can do it too. Or I want to be like her. And uh, so automatically people are out there like, why are you wasting your time? And uh, what is it going to uh, get to uh, bring for you? How are you going to, uh, like, what exactly are you looking at for your future? I was, I remember I picked up an Asian medal and I got picked up by ONGC. This was way back in 2008. And back in the day, we didn't have any coaches. There was a lot of uh, partiality between men and women because there was no... Uh, uh, what do I say? There was no faith in uh, a woman trying trying to uh, project herself or trying to uh, you know do something on the international score. So whatever we did, we did. Uh, I was the first one, and then we had a few more. We had two, three more, and then but it didn't matter what you did on the Indian circuit. It only mattered what you did on the international circuit. Now, how do you get to the international circuit of the, if the Indian government doesn't send you because they have certain criteria which you can't match because you don't have any support system in order for you to push you towards matching those criteria. So it was a struggle. I got, I worked, uh, I got picked up my first international medal and I got picked up by ONGC. I remember my uh, first day as a public, so my, my mom was thankful that because she was always you have to, you know, she, I had science in school, I had economics honors in college in, uh, in Delhi. So she was always inclined that I, that, that I pursue academics because there was no future in sport. ONGC changed all of that for me. I joined ONGC as a public relations officer in 2008, 3rd of September. And I remember going to office and uh, meeting my boss and asking him, sir, uh, what would you like me to do? He says, what are you doing here? Go and shoot. Oh. And that changed everything because then now, I had a job, I could focus solely on my career, and I always say I became an ONGC in first, which helped me to become an Olympian. Because at least I knew that I could be driven enough to uh, go for my goal, because I had a support system. So yeah, things have changed, and uh, the whole idea of sports, women in sports, has changed, and I'm thankful to corporates and organizations who have given us that platform, for example, of pieces with the police. And it just gives you that much confidence that you can uh, balance uh, your regular life. Nothing's regular in our life, I'll tell you that. Uh, and your sports life. So that has been pretty much my journey. When it comes to sports, we generally talk of success and we celebrate the medals. But sports is one thing where there's a lot of failures because if we talk of pyramid, the base is very big and at the top only one makes it to the Olympics. So was there any uh, a phase when you thought of either quitting the sport or taking a long break or a disappointment? So it's too early. You have to uh, yes, I agree. Uh, the journey to the Olympics is not easy. And, uh, but I don't think, personally speaking, there was ever any moment where I ever thought of quitting the sport because 
uh, I don't carry that attitude of quitting. I have always like never give up spirit. So I never thought of quitting the sport, but yes, uh, there was a lot of politics happening when I was going to the Olympic Games. So in the in the federation and also yeah, that puts doubts in your mind that you work like four years and maybe even more than that to reach to that level, and then suddenly there are people who are who don't want because just they don't they don't like your face or they don't like uh, your attitude or they don't like your bravery so they try to try to kind of do politics with you so that was the phase which was like a very disturbing phase i would call it but uh, uh, never there was never any moment where i should say okay i would have said that i would quit but yes uh, if you're going to a competition and sometimes you're not able to perform to your own expectations and you wanted more out of it so then it's always important to you know, take a break to detox yourself and uh, to freshen up yourself, your energy, your mind, your spirit for the next challenge. So there have been phases like this and um, just before the World Championship when I qualified for the Olympic Games, uh, there was this kind of phase where uh, there were four World Cups and we were not, I was not able to qualify for the Olympics. So then I was thinking like what's wrong and what's happening. So then you just take a break, which is actually, you can't actually call it an active break, but it's a mental break. So like that sort of things, it's very professional thing I'm talking about. So you take a mental break and you sort of analyze and focus on where you went wrong and what, what is going wrong. And you work on your shortcomings, on your weaknesses and improving your mental strength so that you're able to realize the dream which you've been hoping for and hoping to achieve. So yes, we do take such breaks and, uh, but never a moment where I would say that I, thought of quitting the sport. Uh, today I'm not actively into the sport but yes I always keep myself updated with what's happening with the youngsters and all the other shooters, my colleagues still shooting like Shagun so I just keep updated that what's happening and shooting still lives inside my heart. So that's the passion and uh, that's it. In making to the Olympics is a great feeling for a player like a, a country of uh, 100 plus the crew population now that's about 100, uh, 140 and about 78 or maximum 100 makes it to the Olympics in a cycle of four years. Uh, so uh, Shagun, when you made it to the Olympics and when you missed, mm -hmm. came close to qualify for the second Olympics, so how you were dealing with it? Well, uh, yeah, my first, when I made it to the Olympics the first time, it was, uh, I still remember this was the World Championships in Penry and uh, I came fourth in that and uh, US, uh, China and uh, I think it was France, they already had the quota. There was only, so what happens in the Olympics, how you get to the Olympics is not that the country sends you, like you have to be somewhere on the world uh, ranking and that is how you get to the Olympics. So it's not like what fine day we said her, we said we would literally have to earn that spot and there are very few slots. Uh, the second time, uh, you hit a nerve now, but I, okay. The second time when I came very close to going to Rio was uh, I was performing uh, consistently, but the government did not uh, give me the support that I needed in order to go out and train because of reasons best known to them. I still remember there were these criteria that were made uh, where uh, um, I was number one in the country and top set this car, uh, target Olympic podium. And uh, they had made criteria for all the men in the shooting and the women in air rifle, air pistol, all of that. Skeet, uh, uh, I think Skeet, no, Skeet women they hadn't, but uh, in trap women since I already represented the country in uh, London and I was consistently doing well, they completely scrapped the trap women uh, team and I went and met the sports secretary back in the day and I said sir uh, I have represented India I'm the only one to ever represent India at the Olympics I am number one in the country right now what is the reason that you have uh, scrapped my name he didn't have an answer I remember I had to go I qualified for so there are I mean, there's a lot of politics that used to I'm sure it still goes on but back in the day I was subjected to it uh, I was uh, I qualified to represent India at the ISSF World Cup in Mexico in Acapulco and uh, and what I'm saying is there were people who were 8th and ninth 
uh, in the country who were still getting funded. I was number one in the country and I got no funding. So they made a criteria for me. So I went to Acapulco, uh, uh, Mexico, and they said, if you shoot, and that time our scores were out of 75. They said, you need to shoot a minimum of 69 in order to be eligible to get funding from DOS. So I said, okay. Um, I went to Mexico. I remember I shot a 21 in the first round and I knew I needed to shoot a 48. So I shot a 24, 24. I hit a 69. I came back. I came back, met the sports secretary and told him, so you made this criteria for me. I shot a 69. He said, okay, I'll talk to the committee. Nothing. Nothing. Went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> Nothing happened. Okay, went with papers, went with uh, comparisons, went with, I'm saying, I'm not saying don't fund the others, but why are you not funding me? God love us. Uh, then we were in Baku. I got a call from a very prominent person in the, uh, in the ministry and said that, uh, Shabun, you've been shooting well. And uh, Rio was just right, right out the corner, right? And these were our qualification stages. For an athlete to be guided in those qualification stages is absolutely crucial you have to have a coach you have to have an entire team you have to have a sports psychologist you have to have your nutritionist everything costs money we don't make any money in shooting it is literally a passion that takes us here so uh then i went i remember i was going to baku in azerbaijan and i got a call in italy and said that uh, you shoot well in baku and then we'll come back and then we we'll talk about it i said sure I went to Baku, I shot a 71, 72, <coughs> won the quota for the Olympics. I think it was Great Britain or something. And with a 71, I came back and I shot, and all these scores are on record. I have emails that have been exchanged with, with the people in prominence. And I uh, came back and they said, no. Uh, they, it was like radio silence. So all these things, sometimes they don't like your face, sometimes they don't like your attitude, sometimes they don't... But at the end of the day, with sports, I mean, it's all on, uh, it's all on paper. It's black or white. And then when you are pushed into a corner, that's the time you feel like quitting. That is the time when you go into a corner and you cry, and you say, "Why me? What? I'm I'm working hard, and but why am I being subjected to this?" But you get up again. You get up again, <coughs> and you show up the next day. And yeah, I missed out on Rio by a whisker. Uh, Tokyo, I was nowhere close, I'll be close. It does deject you and you feel dejected in terms of where you are trying. So sports is tough like that, but I'm sure it happens in, I mean, I'm sure it happens in offices and all also. But like I said, our sporting career is very short. So if you don't make it or break it in, in those many years, or uh, then it's very hard to uh, kind of go forward. And unfortunately, people only talk about the medalists and people who have, you have to understand, it's all about that day, it's all about that moment, but everybody who reaches that stage has been working equally hard with equal dedication, equal sacrifice. So I think everybody has to be applauded. All these kids who are sitting here who are at the under 17 hockey team, they're all working hard in order to get there. It is that that should be appreciated and that is what will culminate into medals. If you don't support us till the time we are trying, then no way are you going to get those medals. I think uh, earlier shooting was used to be uh, seen as an urban sport because of the infrastructure we were looking to have a shooting range at Father. But now a uh, lot of ranges are coming into villages, a lot of leaders from villages are making big shootings. So the incentives, cash awards is one of the reasons. So what's your take on this and how this is revolutionizing the sport? Sport is definitely like, the system actually has changed, evolved over the years. And I could give the credit to the sports persons because the athletes who have been winning medals at the world stages, people start believing in you. And I heard I would also like to thank the corporate sector because they have, because shooting was a sport where, no, where we had no sponsors at that time. It's not a spectator friendly sport, you don't enjoy watching it and hardly anyone is, hardly anyone cares about it. But then it has come a long way, we have corporates who are supporting the shooters and even other sports which are not so spectator friendly or not so popular. So uh, I think uh, we all need to learn from it also, we need to learn from how BCCI has marketed, cricket has marketed itself so well. 
So we also are still in the learning phase, I guess, the other sports, how to market their players. Because financial support is very important, as Shagun said. At the end of the day, it's all about how everything is put into place. Your finances, your coaches, your mental training, your physical fitness, your diet, everything. And it takes a lot of your, of, out of your pocket. So I think financial support is needed. But yes, because of the shooters and the other sports doing so well, parents are now very forthcoming to bring their children into the sport and they don't ask questions like is ka fayda kya hoga that that setup has changed somewhat they just want their children to win it's not just for jobs it's not for anything else it's just to win and have a good name so uh, mindset has changed in that way and i think that has led to all the schools colleges even at the smaller level at the club level at the village level everyone wants to have a shooting range and they have access to it so i think it has come a long way and uh, uh, it's all about the efforts of the people who are interested in the sport. I would give the credit to them. I wouldn't give credit to anyone else for it because it's when your shooters are doing well, sports persons are doing well, people around them, there's a system, good people come along and they give you that opportunity to that, that platform where sports persons can train and take their dreams forward. So I think, yes, sport has come a long way, but still, if we think of it in the because. If we look at the bigger picture, a lot needs to be done also because uh, the support system still needs to be made more stronger for the benefit of the players. And uh, like at the end of the day, after you are done with your sport, you know, so there is you need to have some financial security, some economic security. So in that sense, we really need to work a lot more. And I think that's one point where we need to stress upon we as sports persons who have been doing we need to stress more upon this, so I think that's the way it should be. Shagun, as far as uh, shotgun shooting is concerned, it was considered a sport for uh, royals or uh, other ones who are from influential background because of the cost. Should you? But now things are changing. But in the Asian games, in the women's trap team, uh, there's a one girl from a, a shooter from the uh, a daughter of. Uh, Fisherman, what is the top offer, Dobi, and then it's from a, a, rock, a royal family. So, how the things are changing, especially in shotgun? So, you are pick on this. So, uh, things have changed quite uh, considerably in sport, I feel. Uh, yes, shotgun is an expensive sport, and the gun is expensive, the cartridges are expensive, uh, clay targets that we shoot are expensive, and they're all consumables. So once you shot them, it's done. And then you have to keep buying more and more and more. Uh, but now the government, uh, government has set up schemes like uh, whether it's Kano India, whether they are picking up, uh, you know, they're seeing talent at a very young age and they're picking them up and they're nurturing them and they're giving them all the facilities that are required. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the kids are, uh, they have a sports psychologist, they have a nutritionist, they have uh, gyms. They have hospitals where they can stay. So it's, it's become more aspirational as well. It's not just, uh, you know that if you have talent and uh, if you're going to do well, your lives are going to change. Like there's this uh, girl who did really well in, in uh, she picked up a medal in the Asian Games and uh, she became the first girl in the army to be, I'm forgetting that exact term, and Preeti Rajak is her name. And the amount of confidence that it's given that girl. So now it's not like you have to be from a royal family. I'm not from a royal family. I'm from I'm a farmer. And uh, uh, my dad had the privilege to shoot. And uh, that's how I got into it. But yes, the expense was a huge factor. The army played a huge role. It was me and it was the army girls who actually joined the army mm -hmm. in order to pursue shooting. So the army picked them up and it gave them a career. And it also gave them a platform where they can, could showcase their skills as far as sport is concerned. So that was back in the day. And now you have people from all over. Manisha K, who uh, was a silver uh, junior world champion, comes from uh, Bhopal. And her father is, uh, uh, was a, is a fisherman. But you have to understand, these girls wear that with a lot of pride. It, there is no, sports is a leveler. When you're onto the sports field, nobody cares which family you're from, where, uh, what kind of upbringing you have. Uh, it's all about performance. And we are, and it's, uh, it's, it's a very humbling experience 
where uh, you take in, if you have not performed somebody else, you have to walk up to your opponent and you have to congratulate them and nothing really matters there. It's just about what, how they've played on the field, whether they've uh, done the country proud. So as far as uh, backgrounds are concerned in uh, clay pigeon shooting, I think that is, uh, that is, doesn't make a difference anymore. And I'm glad that's not spoken about also because I don't think that is something that we should speak about. We should speak about the skill of the, of the person. We should skill, uh, talk about the dedication of the sports person. We should talk about their achievements and uh, what sports and achieving that has made them into. And that, that is where their journey should start from. And that is the kind of confidence that uh, sports uh, gives you. That's the kind of humility that it gives you, uh, where everybody is seen as an equal. And that is the beauty of it. Uh, definitely, I agree with you, uh, Shagun. So rather than highlighting about, uh, you're giving core emphasis about the background. But at times, like as a journalist, uh, these stories are also required because the one who comes from a disadvantaged group or a underprivileged section, so they need a sort of inspiration because like you but can able to do it so the, they think that the others can also be but able. their drive is definitely far more than uh, uh, you know because they want to prove themselves they want to change their lives they want to so they work really, really hard. It's not that we, uh, like the others don't. But they, they see a future looking at where sports can take you. And that is what drives them. That I can change my life. I can change my family's life. I can bring fame to my family. This is one medium that will help me do so. And uh, I think that is, uh, so, uh, I mean, the kind of drive that I've seen in these girls and these young kids is uh, is commendable and uh, that is where they've reached where they preach. Yes, we all are on the same page on this. But after wrestling, shooting is a sport which has given maximum number of individual medals to the country. 2004, it was silver, 2008, gold in 2012, silver and bronze. But after this, we missed the podium finish in 2016 and 2020. And though the quota basis has increased, so uh, was it uh, too much of pressure of expectations, or the things should didn't have uh, should not have been? There should be a better system to churn out a Olympic medalist rather than relying on the old system. So, what's your take on this, Abhijit? I think talking about the Olympic Games, uh, we can't just pick out one factor or reason for not winning the medal. When we go to the Olympic Games, no one goes there to lose. You are the best of the world and you go there to win. But we have, unfortunately, we have only three medals to win. So only three people will win the gold, silver and bronze and no one goes out there to lose. But yes, after we won some medals, uh, every Olympic carries a lot of a load of expectations for the shooters. I remember 2016 shooters were the favourites to win medals. But then, you know, it's all about that day, as Shakun said, that moment. And even Mr. Talwar said about, he mentioned about that moment. So it's all that matters on that day. If I talk about my Olympic Games, it was just a moment, which led me from something to nothing. So giving an example, I started my match very well. I started it very confidently on a very confident note and that time we used to have a 40 shot match and we have to shoot each shot at 10 so to score 400 out of 400 so I for 24 shots I was shooting very well and then there came this moment this defining moment this thought which which I thought ki, okay so I'm doing well only 16 shots to go abhi miss nahi karna hai. so this thought miss nahi karna hai. Not to miss any more shot led me led me into missing some shots. So that was the moment. So it was not that I was not prepared. Everyone who goes there, you know, irrespective of the politics, what's happening around, yes, it does affect you in some way. Because instead of focusing on your technique, on your mental strength, you also have to deal with that unnecessary drama that's going around. That does take a toll, but I think when you're standing on the field, holding your gun and all that is just diminishes away. 
maybe at the back of the mind something is there but otherwise everything is just it just fades away and you're just focused on your process on your technique so it's all about that moment and i think i'm 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 sure all these shooters must have given their best standing on the range on the firing line they must have given their best but then yes they were not good enough to win that day someone else was good enough someone else was able to manage put all the moments together synchronize them at that point when it was required so i would just say i am very happy they performed they were there at the olympics they gave a good fight so i think we should appreciate that that all of them they gave their best and uh, i can understand how dejected they must have felt you know some some of them winning by such a losing by such a short margin so i think we should appreciate the efforts put by each every athlete who goes there uh, instead of uh, like saying that what happened because that's something else which we can analyze later everyone has their own personal journey i have my own personal notebook inside my mind that what happened what went wrong as i said that was a moment that just a thought which led me to the thinking of the result i started to focus on the result rather than to focus on the process so that's how it happened for me and i'm sure similar thoughts must have occurred in these shooters minds also that's why they were not able to give that performance which was required that day so i just take it that way and i think we should take it positively from there because that moment changed me a lot of me for the rest of my life for many decisions which even i make in policing so that was the moment with the defining moment it was sad for me but yeah it brought a lot of introspection into my mind before i when i were i do something so i think uh, we must just cheer the athletes who go there who represent the country and uh, you know make us proud yes definitely in paris olympics as around the corner we can see what our athletes should win more and more medals it inspire more players not only shooting in all the sports and uh, as far as shooting is concerned we have 20 quota places and uh, we have lot of teenagers in the hopefully they're going to make it to the olympics after the final selection uh, uh, so shabun what's your take for the paris olympics so how as far as your like perspective is concerned how the things are going mm-hmm. to the indian shooters i am always positive about them i think uh, they have been performing phenomenally well on the global stage we've picked up the maximum number of quotas that we've ever done in the history of the olympics and uh, we have um, uh, almost equal participation in men and women so that goes to say a lot and uh, uh, looking at uh, their performances and how they've been performing on the on the global stage looking at the government support looking at how they've been pushed i think we should uh, we're always hopeful that uh, they come back with a good haul but like i said it all it all depends on that day it all depends on that nanosecond not even a second uh, like a like in clay pigeon shooting our reaction time is anywhere from 0.4 seconds to a second oh. so that's the amount <laughs> that's the amount of time it takes for us to either break a target or miss a target so now it all depends on that and uh, uh, i think we all should be positive india is doing well in the shooting circuit that i'm so glad you're not talking about cricket for a while she's <laughs> got <laughs> and uh, yeah so we are uh, hopeful and uh, uh, we should come back with a few medals at our belt for sure and definitely we might see for the next time a uh, shooting group and those who will be part of the shooting group who have never been into shooting so yeah. that would going to be a great success for the sport uh, so thing through for all gone so in the attack good i'd like to add one uh, statement from the, the behalf of ceos he was sapit shogun that made some point for the detail corporates so i i belong to the corporate only uh we did something on this uh, particular aspect of because is it wasn't the, ch- the this uh, shooting but the chess uh you know that gokesh as well as even vishwanath anand we sponsored them in the beginning and they became grand master super grand masters not that to add that why it is happening because i coined the idea that go for a ambassador you know, why they are not people or why you are appreciating but uh, normally sportsmen do forget about the corporate they, they become the hero the heroics we have been uh, i'm sorry taking hero heroics for their publicity why not the sports people make them the sports ambassadors all the corporate big corporate should do that that is what i have coined it but that was in rajasthan not not in this so this is my idea thank you definitely sir who is positive side that we talk hum 
बीच में ऐसा टाइम भी था जब हमारे पास कोई ओलंपिक मेडल नहीं होता था एंड सिंस टू थाउजेंड वी आर विजिंग ओलंपिक मेडल्स इन ईच ऑफ दिक्स एट एस विच एस एक्ट कि अब हमारे जो प्लेयर्स है वो मेडल जो है वो कहीं बहुत बड़ा टारगेट रहता है करेक्ट सो वी वो बेस्ट ऑफ लक फॉर आर स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन फॉर द पैरिस ओलंपिक्स Thank you, thank you so much, sir. That was a very interesting conversation. So right now we would close it, and then maybe we can interact personally, we ask take questions, and all of it. Maybe ask a question. Okay, sir. Maybe you can do that personally. If it's a very short one, you can definitely do that. So maybe we shall answer it depends. Just a question, Mr. Sir. Uh, I've covered shooting. Unfortunately, never covered you, but I was at uh, Melbourne when. Uh, yeah. Neet won the gold medal, climbed the victory podium. Although the folk, uh, limelight was taken away by some shared, uh, the whole team. No, sir. Some ways. Some ways. Within the shotgun fraternity, do skeet shooters feel as children of lesser cause because all the focus is on trap? Because of the number of medals the trap shooters have won, other than Morad, nobody had won a medal before. Ah, uh, not anymore. Not anymore. Earlier we used to think that we are queen bees and uh, kings of the range, but now Skeet has definitely uh, got the right uh, poaches, and they have been like, like I said, they picked up uh, an Olympic quota for Skeet men. Ananta Roka, Raisa Thilo from Chandigarh has picked up the Skeet uh, uh, quota for women, the first ever Skeet woman to actually ever win a quota for the Olympics. So I think it's we've. Uh, Uh, they're pretty much the same now. We can't say drag is more favored than uh, skeet anymore. I think we are all what big happy fraternity. Well, thank you so much for letting us know the realities and how, as women, you had to face those challenges. Uh, a lot of lessons for all of us. Thank you once again. So now I would request Captain Sushil Kapoor to please come up on stage and hand over some mementos to our panel right up here. लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन कैन यू प्लीज हैव अज राउंड Thank you for the kind. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Then I'm step. Okay. We are going to take photo. I know we're going to take photo. Yes, sir. Let's have a group photo together. Let's go. Okay.